Hey everyone! Well, I am here to share with you some really important things that I feel is going to benefit your homeschool really powerfully, and that is notebooking. Notebooking is probably the most powerful tool that you can use in your homeschool to really increase your children's learning potential and enjoyment of learning. It will build a love for learning. I originally heard about notebooking um, when I started researching homeschooling when my child was pretty young and um, and then I had the benefit of this wonderful friend who dragged me off to let me make sure I'm yeah you can hear me um, dragged me off to a four-day Charlotte Mason intensive Charlotte Mason an educator from the uh, late 1800s who really knew how best to teach children, what was the best way for children to learn and understand what they were learning and to remember, retain their learning. We don't wanna be teaching our children and they forget everything they learned the way it happened to us when we were in school. We would learn it, regurgitate it on a quiz or test or worksheet and then promptly forget it ever existed. We don't want that for our children. We want a better thing for our children and notebooking is that better thing. So my friend dragged me off to this Charlotte Mason intensive where we had to actually be the students and this person was at the front um, of this um, of the room basically teaching us like she was the teacher and we were the students and we learned so many wonderful things about how to educate using the Charlotte Mason method and one of the things that we did was notebooking and so of course I implemented this in my homeschool um, and I was only homeschooling one. I have four children. I was only homeschooling one at the time. And um, we just, we would learn, we would read a book. And then after reading the book, I would say, okay, now draw a picture of something that you thought was interesting about what you learned in your book, in your notebook, on your notebook page. And she would just get out her little pencils and her crayons or whatever it was that we had. Um, and I, I'm gonna caveat this by saying, always use the highest quality materials when you are notebooking. And I'll talk about that a little bit more later. But the most important thing was is that she was spending time thinking about the book that she read. And she was drawing a picture. And I actually went and found her old notebook. Now, mind you, she's 28 now. So this was drawn when she was five years old. And this was the, we had read a book called What, um, what Came From, you know, Interesting Things That Came From Ancient Greece. And so it, on this notebooking page, she drew a picture of basically the Olympics, kind of the, uh, she did sports and a gold medal there. And it's kind of, um, you know, basically just what she had learned about the Olympics. And so she drew a picture there. And um, I had originally put it in this little red folder because I thought, oh, you know what? I'm just gonna keep all her little drawings in a red folder. And so I put them all in a red folder and um, and it didn't have to be red, but that was the color it was. And I and, and so each time she drew something, I put it in there and I thought, oh, this is, this is nice, but it's kind of taking a long time because she was, she was just on your creative side. And I'm gonna talk to y'all about what to do with the kids that are not super on the creative side. And so she drew her little picture and then we moved on to different, you know, books and, you know, video videos and tapes and stuff that she notebooked on. And um, yeah, it was tapes back then. That was a long time ago. We did have tapes. It's kind of funny to think about. But, um, but so then the next year I thought, okay, this notebooking thing was seemed like a good idea, but it took a long time and I have so much I want to get through this next year. I want to read so many more books. And if she notebooks, you know, once a week, it's going to take forever for me. I'm not going to be able to get through all these books. And so I basically said, we're not going to do notebooking this year. We're just going to skip it. And um, at the end of the year, like I would say the summer after that year, I saw, we had studied Middle Ages and, you know, all the artists and everything from the Middle Ages. And I, had, I saw um, a picture of, a, of something done by Leonardo da Vinci. And I said, oh, look, that, that is done by Leonardo da Vinci. And she says, who? And I thought, what do you mean who? We, we studied him. We studied his work. How can you not know who I'm talking about? We know, I never studied that. Of course she had, but she didn't remember it. And I thought, what did I do wrong? How could she not remember these wonderful books that we read? And then 
about a year and a half after that, I found that little red folder. And I said, oh, look, sweetheart, look at what you created when you were your first year of homeschooling. It's like kindergarten-ish um, age. And she opened it up and she saw that picture of the sports. And she said, oh, that's from that book, what came from ancient Greece. And then she went on to list five other things or more that came from that book, what, hap what came from ancient Greece. And I thought, she remembered everything in that book after only drawing a picture of one thing. And I realized then the value of notebooking, that it's more than making sure the child records everything they learned. She didn't write, draw pictures of everything that came from ancient Greece. She drew a picture of one thing that came from ancient Greece. And, be, and in the act of creating that notebook page, she actually remembered the rest of the material in that book. And I realized then that while she was creating that notebook page, her mind was contemplating what she learned. She was thinking it through. She was spending time focused on the material. And by doing that, she remembered other things that were in the, in the, in the book. And I realized that notebooking is much more than just a fun little activity or exercise. It's actually a valuable and important tool in your educational toolbox. So my name's Jeannie Fulbright. I'm the author of Apologia's Elementary Science Curriculum. I have, um, I've got the astronomy, botany, we've got chemistry, physics here, and then I've got my three zoology books that cover all the animals. Um, and these are all elementary science curricula that are designed to be done with all of your children in elementary school. You can just pick a book and go, go in depth in, um, in each field. Um, and I am also uh, the, I, I'm a strong Charlotte Mason advocate. And so I also have a Facebook group, Charlotte Mason Christian Homeschoolers. If you wanna learn more about the Charlotte Mason philosophy of education, you're welcome to join that group. We would, you will just find a lot of people willing to, um, to just share their hearts with you. And also I'm a homeschool veteran, obviously. All my kids are all graduated. Um, and so I, um, I've been through it. I was in the thick of it. And I understand what is it, what was valuable and what's not. And I really wanna share with you today how important notebooking is. Notebooking, what is notebooking? So essentially, notebooking is where a student creates a living book and living books are a huge Charlotte Mason philosophy, an important uh, a pop tool in Charlotte Mason's toolbox, but it's a, the student creates their own living book by employing their comprehension of the material, their critical thinking, thinking through what they've learned, they're contemplating it, and most importantly, their creativity to express their learning in their own unique manner. And creativity is a huge part of this. Creativity matters even as children get older. Um, it was Albert Einstein who was a college professor. He said, it is the supreme art of the teacher to, to awaken joy in creative expression and knowledge. And he believed that for college students. How much more is that true for our younger, our younger people at home? So what happens when a child is creating a notebook page is they are actively visualizing what they've learned. And in order to create a notebook page or complete a notebook assignments, they actually are required to think through it. Whereas other, other methods, methodologies that people use in science and history and other subjects, they don't actually require the child to spend time in contemplation. And Charlotte Mason had it right when she says, of course, that which they visualize or imagine clearly, they know. It is a life's possession. How powerful is that? It is a life's possession. And let me, I mean, obviously my daughter a few years later remembered the, um, the, 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 the page. I wanna also just share with you a few years ago when she was about 25, 
she ran across, I was, I was showing her her old notebooking journal. I, I basically threw everything that she had done into a huge, large notebook. So originally, we usually start out with little notebooks for each subject in each year. And then at the end, I stick them all into the Grand Master History Notebook. So this history notebook has all of the history notebooking that she did through her whole homeschool journey. And, um, and she saw this page here and she said, oh, I remember that. And she had done this when she was about eight years old. And she said, that was that book. And she went on to describe the book. It was a door in the wall. And she went on to describe all the things that happened to the book. And she said, I hated that book. <laughs> I thought, okay, she remembers, at least she remembers. She remembers she hated it. She remembers the details of it just by what? The entire book, she remembered the entire book. I mean, I know I've read a lot of books and I can't remember all the details of what happened, probably because I didn't notebook the book. But what's amazing is that when they do spend time creating something from their learning, they remember it. It is, as Charlotte Mason says, a life's possession. And notebooking is not new. It's not a homeschool, it's not a Charlotte Mason um, created ideology, It, you know, idea of learning. It's not hers. It is actually the way they educated children and people educated themselves for all, so many years, so many thousands of years. Leonardo da Vinci kept notebooks on everything he learned, drew pictures, wrote notes. Lewis and Clark kept avid notebooks through their entire journey across the Pacific Northwest. Nat Bowditch from, um, from Carry On Mr. Bowditch one section in there I was really struck struck by when I was reading that to my kids is when he realized how important ropes were, he started a notebook on everything about ropes. Alexander Graham Bell kept notebooks. People kept notebooks. That's how they taught themselves. That's how they learned. How, that's how they remembered what they were learning. John Quincy Adams sent a letter to his dad, who was obviously in Europe trying to solicit, in, in France, trying to solicit um, money for the Revolutionary War and so his dad was missing his dad was gone he sent his dad a letter saying and at the end he said p.s. sir if you will please be so good as to favor me with a blank book I will transcribe the most remarkable passages I meet with in my reading which will serve to fix them upon my mind he was 10 years old when he wrote that 10 years old I think that's pretty powerful a pretty powerful um, just testimony to the fact that notebooking, keeping a notebook, writing down what you learned, keeping um, it all in a place where you're creating it, that is a powerful tool for our children. It really will help them to learn. Um, what happens is that when they are focused on the subject and they're creating a notebook page, they're not just filling out a worksheet. Worksheets and tests, I believe, hijack the purpose for learning. They're no longer, they're just, they remember what, they, they listen to the passage and then they're given a worksheet and they don't have, there doesn't take any contemplation, it doesn't take any real true attention to the subject for them to fill out a worksheet and a test. Those things do not further learning. What notebooking does is it furthers their learning. It increases their learning and it really requires them to pay attention. And attention is a habit. Charlotte Mason talks about attention and the habit of attention. She says, attention is simply the act by which the whole mental force is applied to the subject in hand. This act of bringing the whole mind to bear. And so while they're creating a notebook page, their whole mind is engaged in the subject. So I'm gonna show you all some examples of notebooking um, from some of some all of my books have notebooking journals that go along with each book and the notebooking journal is a place for them for the student after they've learned to record what they've learned I give sometimes assignments sometimes I give free free a free reign for them to just write the fascinating facts they learned but I'm just going to show you some examples so um, in chemistry and physics at the the one of the last lessons we learn about machines all the different kinds of simple machines and in that section, I, I have a, a place for them to write. I have what kind of machine you're going to write about, inclined planes. And then they just draw a picture of inclined planes. And when they're doing the drawing the picture, that what it does is it helps them to lock it into their mind. 
It helps to make that imagination their life possession. The twisted plane, the twisting planes like screws, and first class levers, second class levers, third class. So they're, they're creating a notebook page based on what they're learning, but, but the fact that they're drawing out what they've learned requires their mind to be focused and have their whole attention on it. And using creativity while doing it really increases their learning and helps them to remember what it is they've learned. Um, in the, uh, this is from my Zoology One book. I, I have the students create migration routes of different birds. They choose which birds they want to they map out the migration routes of. We've got the hummingbird, we've got the, the albatross and the terns, and, and they write it out and then they write out what they remembered about what they learned about birds and migrating. And when they're right, in the act of writing it out, it helps them to remember it. Creating the migration routes, then whenever they see a map, their mind will remember creating those migration routes, routes for the birds. And it will be something that will forever stay with them. The power of creating something from what you've learned helps it to stay with them forever. Um, one of my favorite notebooking activities um, is in my anatomy book. And so in anatomy, we have um, a section where they, they create a personal person and they put it in their notebook. And essentially, at the, in the back of the book, they pick, the, they, they pick their person. And so there's all kinds of different beautiful colors of people to choose from. And they can choose the color of the person they're going to, they want it the best, best matches them. They cut out a picture of their head and then they glue the person and they, they glue the person down and then they attach the head by tape on. And every time they learn about a body system, there's transparencies at the back where they cut out, they can cut out the transparencies and attach it. Let me see if I can get this so you can see it better. So I can attach it. And so, um, see an example here of my daughter who is, she was about five in this picture, but now she's, she's about to be 21. Sad. So anyway, so after they learn, the first thing they learn about is they learn about the skeletal system. So the first thing they attach, the first of transparency is the skeletal system and that's and it's under her head and so then she lifts it up and then the next thing they learn about let me see if I can get this to work here the next thing you learn about is the muscular system and it's right there under her little face and then the next thing they learn about is the digestive system and they add that and so at the end of the year they have all of the transparencies layered underneath their personal person, the person that they are. So that's a really fun activity for their notebooks. And in addition to that, there's a lot of really great activities that they, they do while they're learning. I mean, there's a, obviously, the book has a, a great many fun activities for them to do. Um, for example, in they also label a skeleton and then they, they also um, have a have a identification with for different bones, little smaller bones. And um, there's just a lot of fun activities for them to do in the Anatomy Notebooking Journal. And that's just another really fun way for them to solidify the material that they studied. And then um, another thing we have in all of my books is every chapter has a um, mini books, which I call mini books. Some people call them lap books, but they're not gonna be put into a folder they're actually put into their notebooking journal so this is a lap book of the layers of the earth and you have you know you write write about what what each layer is about what it means and where it's located and what it con consists of and each layer of the book is put in there and they just it's a fun way to um to increase their spending time with the material and focusing on it and doing activities and fun projects with um and, and cutting out and labeling and drawing and just writing about what they learned, it actually really does increase their learning. Um, so I'm going to just show you just from one of my botany books. So this is my botany book and um, I'm just going to show you a whole notebooking lesson. So this is the lesson on pollination in the botany book. So the first thing you'll see is a coloring page and they can just helps them you know, they're just drawing and there's a there's a scripture verse consider the birds of the sky they don't sow or reap or gather into barns yet your heavenly father feeds them aren't you worth more than they so there's always a scripture verse that's somehow related um, and then I asked them to record the fascinating facts you learned in this lesson so they can either do that 
after the first reading or after usually it would take two weeks to do one lesson and so just whenever they feel like I want to write about what I learned and draw a picture of it so they record the fascinating facts and then they do activities and when they do activities and projects they record what they did and what they learned in that section and so um, in this activity we have them they I have them illustrate each of the pollinators pollinators they learned about so they learned about bees they learned about bats they learned about moths and so just by drawing a picture of it surprisingly drawing a picture and writing a few sentences about what they've learned actually increases their retention of the subject that helps them to remember for life a life possession who the pollinators are so we've got the birds and the butterflies and then of course um, they write down any, any activities they did that they enjoyed um, they also here's another fun notebooking activity I have in this book is they create a comic strip of a flower waiting to be pollinated and so they animate the flower and, and in this one we've got the flower and he's he's sad or she's sad and then the bee wants to go there but the flower's too sad and so the flower gets advice to perk up and so flower perks up and then all the pollinators come to the flower so it's just you know it's just using your mental creativity to create a comic strip about anything I mean my my boys loved creating comic strips that was their favorite thing because they would make them absolutely outlandish and and here's another thing with notebooking is make sure that you are allowing your child to do it the way they want it is their own book and even if the material is spelled wrong don't correct it even if some of the material is incorrect it's okay it's all right they'll remember the stuff that is correct as well it's okay we need to let it be their own book activity they created a butterfly garden draw it there we also have vocabulary activity working with the um vocabulary words At the end we have what do you remember section most of the time I have, I just recommend people do this um, this orally but you can have your child write it down more of a kind of like a little evaluation if you prefer it and then of course we always have our um, our special uh, I call them mini books this is not really a book it's just like a mini activity where they um, they put all the pollinators inside the flowers and they're and you learn about each of the pollinators as you pull them up and so that's essentially the way that the notebooking goes in my my books and um, and truly it's you can use notebooking with any subject I love it for science especially because it really gives your child a chance to experience creativity experience um, just really deep thought with their learning because some of the benefits really I believe notebooking really does increase learning and retention I've seen it with my own children I've seen it over and over again it fully engages the child's attention which transmits ownership of the knowledge to the child the child knows it is a life it is their knowledge it is what they know it is a it is part of who they are and what this does is it grows their confidence in science it grows their love for learning and also it provides a record of their learning you know it's funny because my mother is an educator and she was a, a principal of um, of an entire school system she was actually the, the administrator she was originally a principal and then she moved up to administrator and she's choosing curriculum she's very worried about this whole homeschooling thing that I had embarked upon and when she started seeing my kids notebooks she no longer questioned no homeschooling she knew she said this is better than anything we're doing in school this is way better so really does impress the naysayers which is a powerful thing we really want our children to to be learning using their creativity and showing what they've learned and here's the thing with with reluctant learners have them start out really simple just draw a picture stick figure if they really hate drawing they're just not there yet have them cut pictures out like print them up and cut them out and glue them into their notebooking journal as they begin to see these notebooking journals develop over time they're going to be excited about adding to their notebooking journal they're going to be willing to put more effort into it as they watch it grow and develop and so I'm going to start with having them write a title I mean as you saw my daughter just wrote the word sports I you know probably drew it on the board she just copied it one word sports that's how you start out and then you give them a sentence you ask them to write a sentence maybe you write it on the board and they copy it out there maybe you maybe you if the child is really struggling writing and they have so much to say a lot of times I would just have my child dictate to me what they wanted to say and I would type it out and then and then glue that 
print it and put it in their notebook and have them draw pictures all around of what they said in their own words. Um, so there's a way to kind of progress from, from a, a reluctant writer, a, relu a reluctant um, creator into a into a, a full fledged creator. Just go slowly. Allow it. Allow them time after they've read a book, after they've finished a chapter, or finished an, a novel, or watched a video, or went on a field trip, or listened to an audio book, or or doing a or doing a uh, like a, a project, a long term project, or an experiment. Just have them create a page now and again. Don't overdo it. They don't need to be creating pages every day. That would be too much. I mean, that's too much. And you don't need to do that. Don't overdo it. I know homeschool moms, we sometimes can overdo things and turn joy and fun into a drudgery. And we want to make sure we're not doing that. We want it to be uh, just a joyous experience for them. We want to encourage them to enjoy learning. And when we do this by making learning fun and allowing them to use whatever creative tools they they can come up with to to uh, to record their learning so i also on my website geniefulwright.com there are um i have a notebooking i have three notebooking articles and one has a list of a ton of different notebooking ideas like create an advertisement that like in my earth in my um my astronomy book i have them create an advertisement to sell the earth to an alien what are the great features about the earth you just learned all about the earth so there's lots of lots of great ideas in there just um for you to, if you want to employ notebooking in other subjects. So that is notebooking in a nutshell. And I hope that was helpful for you. Please, if you have any questions, be sure to contact me and I am so happy to answer them for you. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.